Have you ever had that feeling of being so exhausted, but you just couldn't find rest? Have you ever like gone to bed super early, like at 8 PM expecting to get a glorious, like 12 hours of sleep only to lay awake with your thoughts, ruminating, swirling around in your head. And you're still just as stressed as you were the day before. Well, if that's you, you're going to want to listen to this episode. We are talking about the 10 types of rest. Yes, there is more than one. And talking about the types of stress that correlate to those types of rest so that you can best nourish your body when you need it most. We're talking about how to give yourself physical rest. That's more than just taking a nap. We're talking about how to give yourself social rest, whether you need to recharge your social battery from being with people or being on your own. We're also talking about ways that you can rest by doing fun things, creative things like baking or cooking or playing with your dog. There are so many tools in your toolbox for rest that people really don't know about. I know when I learned about this topic, it really allowed me to give myself more grace. I feel like a lot of people wear their constant state of busyness like a badge of honor. And let me be the first one to tell you that busy is not better. By being able to give yourself the proper types of rest, you'll be able to tackle each day with a renewed sense of energy and focus and clarity and be able to accomplish more in less time and feel good while doing it. You're listening to Monday through Sunday, a podcast dedicated to helping you live the life you've always dreamed of. Today, you have myself, Logan Lockhart, and the lovely Lane Lipo, and we're going to talk to you about all these things and more so that you can have a great day every day. Welcome to Monday through Sunday. I'm Logan. I'm Sanam. And I'm Lane. We're best friends, the founders of Blossom Brands, and the hosts of this podcast. We can't wait to take you behind the scenes of running a seven-figure agency with our best friends. We're sharing our mistakes, our lessons learned, and giving you tactical advice to build the career, the business, and the relationships you dream of, and a life you don't need a weekend to escape from. So let's get balanced and let's get down to business. Welcome to the show. Okay, so today we are back in studio recording. It is just Lane and I, and we are actually here at our Dallas HQ for the second time this week. We were here on Monday. It is now Friday. We're back again. And it, I feel like I've lived like five lifetimes in this one week. I know. I really need the weekend. I need tomorrow to be Saturday, and it is. And what are you doing this weekend? Nothing. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's what I need. Yeah. I need n- a nothing day. I'm going to go to Eve in the morning. Oh, that's so nice. We'll see. I saw you were doing that and I wanted to come join you, but that's right when I need to pick Andrew up from the airport. Oh, he's coming back from a ski trip. Yeah. Do you ski? I've been one time in Spain when I was studying oh, about really? abroad. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You, you skied abroad. A fun fact about Logan and I is that we both studied abroad in the same small little um, area of Spain called Sevilla, which like is so random so and funny. still blows my mind that we both studied abroad. And it was in a couple Sevilla. years apart, and we went yeah. to different universities in uh-huh. the city. You went to University of Sevilla. I went to Pablo Olavide, uh-huh. and we. I don't know when we figured it out. But I know. I feel like anybody that goes to Sevilla has this like deep, undying obsession yeah. for the city. Studying abroad was really the best time. My sister is studying in Rome right now, and she I looks like she's having so much. She's fun. like living her and I saw that she went to. Life. Bruges, which mm-hmm. is like the coolest city. She's in London right now. Ugh. Her pics have already been so cute. I'm like jealous that she's going in this era where yeah. like people her age are like really cool. Yeah. Where like at my time, I was like borderline dorky at that time in my life. You Mine, know what I mean? I can't utilize or look at any photos from my um, abroad life because it was like at that era when everybody did this, but I did this like more extreme, like the contrast on like the editing oh, was like yeah. disgusting. It literally looks like a cartoon almost yeah. by like yes. how contrasted yes. the photos or are. Or Kim Wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, those just are in the archives and never That's coming out. <laughs> I wasn't even on Instagram stories yet at this time. We were still really into Snapchat stories. So I have so many many pictures of my face with a dog on it yeah. walking around all these historic <laughs> monuments I'm like I wish I had like a normal picture here but that's fine yeah mine was still like I think Facebook albums like I don't even think it was like an Instagram yeah. era when yeah. you had like multiple albums with like yeah. a million pictures each you took with your digital camera yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. love those times good times <laughs> <laughs> well anyway Sevilla big plug for that we love that city <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about today I feel like we are just like we got so fired
fired up, but now our topic is rest. So I need to channel my calm energy. Well, I would say that this was a perfect example of getting rest by connection. You know, we might feel more well rested right now by having this like connection on something that both lights us up, Spain, Sevilla, studying abroad. And like, that is a way that if you maybe have psychosocial um, stress in your life, yeah. you might need that type of rest. So, so if you true. want to learn more about that, keep listening. Fabulous. Okay. So for many of us, our daily goals, when we're not living our best life abroad, when we're just here being normal people, our daily goals are exceedingly high. We have never ending to-do lists. And what we're trying to get out of ourselves on a day-to-day basis is just so much. It's mm-hmm. so taxing. We're putting so much pressure and we can become overwhelmed by this like perpetual state of busyness. And I personally, I feel like this was a really big thing, like in early twenties, I feel like it was a really cool and it was seen as like a badge of honor to be that person that was just like too busy for Can life. Do everything. Like everybody had that friend that you would text them and be like, Hey, do you want to hang out? And they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so busy. Like talk to me in six weeks. You yeah. Know? And, and like, like that wasn't looked down upon and yeah. now it is. It was a badge of honor. And now <laughs> yeah. if somebody said that I'd be like, okay, get a life. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I think that state of busyness while I think like, self-care and embracing rest has become more mainstream. And I'm so glad it has because I'm somebody who like did not take care of myself back in the day when busyness was seen as a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. I think learning what rest truly means and how to provide yourself with the type of rest that will be nourishing to you based on the type of fatigue that you're feeling in your daily life, because spoiler alert, there are different types of stress, different types of rest. And I always got people telling this, like you would tell me like, Logan, you just need to like take a day and rest. And to me, when I hear the word rest, I just think of like, okay, I need to be like unconscious asleep. Like I need to take a nap. Like, is that really going to help me? And then especially when you're really stressed out, the idea of resting sounds great in theory, but actually getting your little noggin to turn off when it's time to go to sleep is a lot easier said than done. So Lane and I were in a woman's group here in Dallas this summer. And one of the topics that we talked about in our group was the different types of rest. And I had no idea that there were so many types. Did you know? I had no idea. And I just love the idea of taking this topic, this information and changing the way we think of rest, changing the way that we think of what we're doing, because what you just said, thinking that you need to be unconscious to be resting, um, like completely asleep or napping, you feel bad when you spend too much time doing that. You, you get down on yourself. You're like, Oh, I wasted too much time. I'm not being productive. And like, there are other ways, first off, like you shouldn't feel that way about taking time to sleep, but there are other ways to rest that won't make you feel that way. And it's just about um, transitioning in your head, what you view as being rest versus what you view as being like your to-do list. So true. And I think there are so many types of productive rest. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to talk about today. Because I mean, with every decision, there's an opportunity cost, right? So if you take the time to rest, you are realistically sacrificing time that you could have been doing other things. But I think by allowing yourself to rest, and what I've learned is by allowing myself to rest is I can actually get more done in less time Mm -hmm. when I'm properly fueled, properly fired up and ready to go. If I like push myself through that 3 p.m. afternoon slump and force myself to keep staring at my computer. Yeah. I will not get anything done and feel so fatigued and exhausted versus if I just listen to my body, give myself a break. And oftentimes I'll find that I get another little burst of energy around like six or seven o'clock at night. Once I learned to like give myself permission to close my computer, step away, I actually found that I was like more creative later and didn't feel that like Oh, that just like drag of forcing yourself to do something that your body is like telling you it's not time to do. Yeah. And I think having the right tools in your toolbox of like what you can do, what you should do during that time of identifying, oh, I can't keep pushing forward instead of just being like, I have to go lay in bed and sleep. And then maybe you sleep and you still don't feel better because maybe you didn't need physical rest. Right. Maybe it was a mental thing. You know, there's all these different ways. And I think understanding first what the stress is, what the cause is, and then what are specific ways to rest that will achieve like the opposite of that Mm -hmm. is really important and something I've never really heard people talk about before. So we're going to go through 10 different types of rest that you can integrate into your life. You can have in your toolbox and you can help identify um, what type of rest you need based off of like how you're feeling, what you're struggling with, what you're going through. And for the first one, we're going to start really with the basics, um, physical rest. This is probably what all of you think about when you think about rest 
just in general. So if you're a Logan, this might be a nap. If you are Elaine, this might be a calming breathwork um, exercise. Or if you're Sanam, it might be a gentle yoga class. So whatever physical rest looks like for you, you probably know what that is. When you're exhausted, you know what your body needs to actually rest. And I'd say that that is the category that you normally put when you have other types of stress in your life. You'll go lean on physical rest, but we're going to go through a whole bunch of different ideas that you should test that will really help you feel more nourished depending on the circumstance. And to be clear, like physical rest is the only rest I knew existed prior to talking about this. Like, like I said, like being unconscious, that's a form of physical rest. Or like, if you think about like from the gym, like they talk about rest and recovery days, like that's actually your muscles needing physical rest. So that's another example of when you need physical rest. But for example, I often find myself thinking I need physical rest and then five hours scrolling on TikTok Mm -hmm. later, my brain is actually even more tired than it was when I started because maybe I needed like mental rest instead. Last night was a perfect example of that for me. I was so exhausted and I was like, okay, I need to sleep for 10 hours tonight. I got in bed at eight and literally didn't fall asleep until 11. So I got like five hours of sleep last night thinking like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I'm going to get so many hours of sleep, but I miscalculated what type of rest I needed. I still don't know exactly what rest I needed. Um, but hopefully what I'm thinking is maybe it was a psychosocial type of rest and I really needed human connection. So really today, this connection between the two of us and our podcast earlier with Sanam is going to help me actually be able to sleep tonight. That's what I'm going to tell myself. I love that. You're so (laughs) welcome for providing you with that social simulation. (laughs) Okay. So the next type of rest, and I would say this is the second most common, or at least that I had in my brain is cognitive rest. And these are non thinking activities. And I love to say this. I'm always like, my brain needs a break. My brain Mm -hmm. needs to think about something else or my brain can't think right now. Mm -hmm. This is like the type of rest that you feel or the type of fatigue that you feel at the end of a long work day, right? Like you don't want to get off your computer and then go like look at your finances. Like you want to like just give your brain a break. And so some examples of ways that you can rest your brain and give yourself that cognitive rest are like cooking, using your brain kind of, but you're also following instructions. Maybe you know a recipe by heart, but you're like not looking at a screen. You're not doing mental math. You're using your hands. It's a great point. And like things like gardening or baking or cooking or cleaning, Mm -hmm. I find is a really good source of cognitive rest. And I feel like a common fallacy for this one is that social media would give you that kind of cognitive rest because you're just mindlessly scrolling. But at the end of the day, social media is such a constant hit of information and Mm -hmm. dopamine that it's actually the opposite. So if you need cognitive rest, but you're scrolling on your phone, you're actually overloading your brain with just so much information in such a split second of a time. Yeah. So that's... That's kind of the opposite that you want to do for cognitive rest. A perfect example of why you need to set clear boundaries with your phone and technology. And if that is something you need to work on, go and listen to our recent episode on how to become not addicted to your phone. All right. So moving on to our third type of rest is sensory rest. So sensory rest is all about relaxing your senses in different ways. So this is really caused by what I would call sensory stress, which is when your five senses are overwhelmed. You've taken in more information than your brain can handle or process. So there's some really unique ways to rest this type of stress. Like one is wearing loose clothing. Oh my gosh. My body gets so tired of tight pants. Right? If you're feeling like stress overwhelmed from your senses, if you just like put on some pajamas, some like loose clothes, instead of having like tight leggings on. That feeling when you take your bra off at the end of the day. Like, oh my gosh, how restful. Yes. So that is one example. Another is taking a warm bath, the warmth on your skin, getting a massage, lighting a candle that has a scent that really soothes your senses. So that's one that I really feel like, you know, you might know that like taking a bath feels restful, but I didn't really realize why. And I think that it's really interesting to realize if your senses just feel overwhelmed, like you feel like you're just in so many different um, directions with the type of information that you've been taking on all day, that these are certain tools that can be really helpful in that regard and really small tweaks. So changing what you're wearing can really make you feel better. Yeah. I feel like if you're somebody that gets like overstimulated in like a crowded mall or a restaurant, like this is a good type of rest for that person. Yeah. And so if you wake up feeling that way, you know, if you're like your morning, if you you kind of are having an off morning feeling that maybe instead of putting on leggings that day, like put on a pair of sweatpants, you know, or flowy pants with like a blouse, you know, you can find ways to still like look cute and like 
uh, cater to where your body's at and like what you need. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Flowy dress, maybe. Yeah, we, we love that. We love a maxi dress around here. Yes. Mm. Okay. The next type of rest is altruistic rest. And that is basically, I think the way I would describe this is like when you just get sick of everything being like me, me, me. Yeah. Like everything's about me, everything are things that I have to do, everything's I think. Like sometimes I get sick of myself. I don't know about you, <laughs> but sometimes I'm just like, I am over myself and I just need to like focus outwardly instead yeah. of inwardly. I think that people say that that's like a really big cause of like depression and anxiety in general is being too self-focused mm-hmm. and really like getting your mind off of yourself. For sure. And so some examples of ways that you could kind of just like put the focus on something else besides you or like volunteering or donating clothing or acts of kindness. Like I, Lane knows I have been in the process of selling some of my old clothes for mm-hmm. like months now. I've cleaned it out. I've listed on Poshmark. And honestly, once I've gone through that process of like having to do all the communications, posting all the photos, I'm like, I really just wish I would have donated these clothes. It would have made me feel so much better. It would have made me feel like I was doing a good deed and it would have been so much quicker and more efficient than trying to like make a buck on Poshmark. So I think that's a way that like this task that I thought I was like doing the responsible thing Mm -hmm. became a stress to me when really it could have been an opportunity for altruistic rest. Hey, entrepreneurs, are you ready to turn your business dreams into reality? Well, we've got something special for you. Imagine having everything you need to start, grow, and scale your business all in one place. Welcome to Shopify, the complete commerce platform designed for your success. As someone who has worked in digital marketing for nearly a decade, I recommend Shopify to all of my clients because it's just so easy. Whether you are selling online therapy sessions or cashmere sweaters, Shopify allows you to manage inventory, market to customers, and accepts payments across multiple sales channels and locations seamlessly. It simplifies the entire process, allowing you to focus on successfully growing your business. If you're not already on Shopify, we have an exclusive offer for you. Our listeners can enjoy three months of Shopify for just $1 a month on select plans. Yes, you heard it right. $1 a month for three months to kickstart your journey on the ultimate commerce platform. Use the link in the show notes to redeem this offer and start your dream business today. All right. So moving on to the next one, ecological rest. The name of this one kind of makes me laugh. It just like reminds me of like, oh, do I need to go to the zoo? Like what? <laughs> like what does this entail? I know it really does. But I think that a lot of our listeners might relate to this one on a very deep level. If you live in a bustling city, if you live in a Chicago, New York, LA, like a big city, um, and you hear cars beeping all day, um, fire trucks driving by, you just have like city energy. Even the like the air. You know, Mm -hmm. the air feels dirty. If you just have that like type of energy, this is like the type of rest that you probably need. And this is maybe spending time in nature, taking a trip to the mountains or the beach or go to a park, lay in the park. This was actually something when I did an internship in New York that I kind of struggled with because like I've spent a lot of time in Chicago, but New York is just like different. It is. It's like you just feel it in your like Chicago is a really clean city and New York is not. Yeah. And I felt like dirty. And so I like on Sundays would go to Central Park and literally just like have a picnic and lay in the green grass. And I was like, I never realized that that's what I was doing. But like I needed that type of rest. I needed to like feel like I was one with nature. So another tip is if you live in a city and like this is totally what you're struggling with, get some indoor plants, like just like find ways to integrate nature into your day to day. I think that that can be like a really helpful helpful, easy tip. Another one, and this is something that's talked about on the Huberman lab podcast a lot is when you wake up first thing in the morning, go outside and just look towards the sun. Yeah. That's actually something that I need to start doing again. I went through a period where I was doing it every day and it really makes a difference. It's good for your circadian rhythm too. So with your struggle to fall asleep, if you do that in the morning, you're supposed to sleep. Maybe that's why I'm not sleeping well right now. It's been so rainy, gloomy, and disgusting in Dallas for the past two weeks. I haven't seen the sun. The sun hasn't existed in two weeks and I'm like literally going insane. That's why I left Chicago because I was like, I can't live in cloudy, rainy, cold weather. It makes me so depressed. And I feel like that's what I've been struggling with. I think that's why I'm not sleeping. Try it. That's what I do right after. After like my morning, like devotional and journey journaling routine, I will put in a five minute podcast, go outside and listen 
or listen to the podcast while uh-huh. I'm looking at the sun. So it's a really short period of time. And I actually even used to do it when I lived in an apartment in Dallas and I was on the first floor of the apartment. So people would be walking past me and I'm like wrapped in my robe and my blanket, just like looking at the sun. People probably thought I was nuts. And I was like, <laughs> you know, you're in your suit on your way to work. It's 8 30. I'm still in my slippers. I think I'm winning here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. So the next one is playful rest, which I feel like this is something that is especially important for people who like consider themselves an extrovert. Maybe if you grew up with a bunch of siblings, you're like used to having that constant interaction. I personally lived alone for the first few years uh, after college. And that was really the first time I'd ever been like truly alone on a regular basis Mm -hmm. all the time. And I found myself like really craving that, like just conversation or connection. Like I would call my mom and talk to her for an hour and she'd be like, okay, like you really need a roommate (laughs) or a friend or something. Or a dog. Yeah, exactly. Which is when I got Ruby, like six, I only lasted six months before I got a dog. And it's because I needed that outlet of just like a little living thing next yeah. to me. Yeah, dogs so, were invented for playful rest. For sure. Like truly. For sure. <laughs> um, and sometimes too much. Sometimes I have to <laughs> tire out and be like, okay, now let's actually physical rest. But um, playful rest can include like team sports or watching comedy or board games, just anything that like gets your juices flowing and it's just like fun for the sake of fun. I think playful rest is something that we as a society really push as young adult or as when you're young. It's exactly. So in school, in college, like there's all these ways for kids to get out playful rest. But as you become an adult, like we don't make time or space for it anymore. And I think it's like, it's really important. And it's a way that you can like, um, not only get rest and like refuel your brain, but kind of connect with your creative side. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's a really good way to come up with new hobbies and um, have other outlets for yourself that like you might not prioritize. But if you consider it a way that you're getting rest, maybe you'll prioritize it. Love that. All right. Moving on to the next rest, psychosocial. So this one can look really different depending on what type of personality you have. So if you are an extrovert or an introvert, I'd say that you're the way that you put this into practice is going to be entirely different. So for someone that is an extrovert, I would say the way that they would get um, psychosocial rest is through connection. They need to like refuel their social battery. Um, and they do this by connecting with other people. Whereas an introvert really needs that solitude. They need their alone time. They need to just like sit alone with their thoughts to be able to re-enter like a social setting and have energy and and be able to be around people and be their best selves. So this is one that's really um, individualistic. So psychosocial, this just basically means like your social battery is depleted, right? Yeah. So if you're an extrovert, you fill it back up one way versus if you're an introvert, you do it the other way. Exactly. Okay. Which one do you relate to? I feel like you're like an introverted extrovert. I feel like you're not yeah. One or the other. I'm an introverted extrovert. And yeah. I actually just listened to someone talking about um, how like 85% of the population is that like introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert. And like true introverts and true extroverts are such a slim amount of um, the society. I would say that in situations that I'm really comfortable in the group setting that I'm in, I'm definitely an extrovert, Mm -hmm. but I also really need solitude, like alone time. Like I really, really need that, but Mm -hmm. I also often really need connection with like real people that I connect with. So I don't, I don't know. You're an extrovert. Yeah. You're a clear extrovert (laughs) all all the way. I remember doing a personality test in college. I don't know if it was the Myers-Briggs or whatever, Uh and it scored you on the scale and I scored 99% extrovert. Oh my God. And the teacher had just finished saying what you just said that it's really rare for somebody to be like all the way on yeah. one end. And then I was like, hello. Yeah. You are a through and through. complete extrovert. Yeah. But I also don't mind being alone. Yeah. Like I can entertain myself, but I am always doing things. I'm yeah. never just like doing nothing. But I, I think you don't need to be alone to get a social battery. Correct. Like I can go on a 10 day vacation with friends and like be great. I need to like have my own room, be able to shut the door. and recover after that. Exactly. Okay. Next one is emotional rest. If like something really heavy is going on in your life and you just feel just emotionally drained, Mm -hmm. like you've been going through hard things or just things that require a lot of like, like I have some friends who are counselors, right? Mm -hmm. So they need emotional rest a lot because they're listening to people's problems all day, every day. And like my friend, she says she comes home to her husband and she's like, I just, like I can't talk right now you know because you've just been so empathetic and so 
emotional with people all day, every day. So yeah. emotional rest is like when you just like either need to like just stop feeling or you need to get your feelings out there. Yeah. So for me, I feel like I get my emotional rest by like talking things out with people. Like mm-hmm. when I'm feeling really distraught, like I think I both sent you and so now I'm like middle of the night text the other night because I <laughs> having all these thoughts and emotions swirling around and where most people would like, they say, you know, don't speak while you're angry or whatever. I wasn't angry. I was like more like stressed. And for me, sending you a text is what calmed me down versus if I had journaled it, I wouldn't have been like, okay, my message has been received. I'm the same way. I need to get something completely out of my head. If I don't, my brain just keeps replaying the same conversation that needs to be had over and over until it's had. Right. Same. (laughs) So my husband is the opposite. He's like, I just need to shut it off and not think about it. And I'm like, yeah, "Uh, but we need to talk about it. It takes Andrew like three to five business days to tell me what's actually wrong with him. Like he'll just be quiet. Like that's what he does. He gets quiet and just doesn't say anything, doesn't even act like anything's wrong, but I just, mm-hmm. and I'll ask him what's wrong. And he's like, I'm just quiet. I'm a quiet person. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. Like, I know the difference. It used to really, really bother me if like Sam and I were in a disagreement or something. And he was like, I just need, I need to walk away. Like he would literally just be like, I need to go. I need to clear my head. And he'd like go outside for a while. Uh-huh. And I, my brain would be spinning. Cause I'd right. be like, I know what conversation we need to have. I yeah. know what I need to say. I need to know what I need to get off my chest. And it would drive me crazy. And then we'd get in a fight over the fight. But now I realize I'm like, I need to let him back off because then he comes back like mm-hmm. so calm and collected and able to communicate his thoughts. And like, sometimes you just really need to get to know each other yeah. before you can like properly communicate or fight or have any type of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew would use to just like stare at me silently. <laughs> and I would be like, are you going to reply? And he was like, I'm thinking. And so I would have to sit there and keep waiting while he thought this still happened. We had a conversation like this a week ago. I just have to sit there and wait for him to speak words. And in the meantime, I'm doing the same thing as you. I'm like planning my next move and like all this stuff. And I just have to wait for him to finally speak. So anyway, that's emotional rest. Either you need to share your feelings or you need to sit quietly and think about them. Yes. Um, You want to talk to us about the next one? Yes. So moving on to spiritual rest. So this can look different for you based off of how spirituality presents itself in your life. So maybe that's prayer, maybe that's ritual, maybe that's meditation, Um, really whatever you look to from a spiritual perspective, that is how you satisfy this rest. But you might be wondering, like, when do I need this type of rest? When do I really need um, that type of prayer or ritual in my life? And I'd say that that's really when any situation challenges your beliefs. So maybe Mm -hmm. it's a person, maybe it's conflict at work, Um, really any time that you just feel like something doesn't sit well with how you truly feel, what you truly believe, that it can really make you feel stressed. Like you, it can like wear you out. You can feel physically tired from it. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that, um, recognizing that it's like, it's not sleep. Like you need to really sit with yourself and like spiritually recover from a situation that can really like throw you off your tracks. Absolutely. I think this is the type of rest for me that I cling to Mm -hmm. when there are situations going on that are just completely out of my control. Like any other of the types of rest in the toolbox, they're in your control. You can pick them up anytime and they can solve the type of stress that you're having. But for me, spiritual rest is for the problems that I can't solve. And it's like my salvation in like just resting in that, like everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to. And Mm -hmm. I don't have control and realizing when I do and don't have control is really what that spiritual rest brings me is being okay when I don't have the control. Yeah. So this might be something that, um, you can really lean into and really leverage in so many different areas of your life. If this speaks to you, some Mm -hmm. people, this speaks to you, some people, it doesn't, but knowing how it plays a role in your life and when you can lean into it can be super powerful. Absolutely. And also just like recognizing that like everything happens for a reason. I think that's something regardless of your religion or spirituality. I do think life ultimately works out the way it's supposed to. And just kind of like resting in that, I feel like brings a lot of comfort for me personally. Completely agree. Okay. So the last one is creative rest. And this one is exactly how it sounds. It's being creative. It's using your imagination. It's using those skills and talents that you may have tapped into, like when you were a kid growing up, but you don't make the time for Mm -hmm. now. So this can be things like painting 
or needle pointing, which is something I'm wanting to get into lately, but kind of going back to, it's kind of ties in, I feel like playful rest, cognitive rest, like it's anything that gets your wheels spinning and gets you to think in a different way. So this could be a hobby. This could be a talent that you're really good at and passionate about, but you don't get to practice a lot or going to see like a really cool experience or a play or something like that. I feel like those are all things that kind of get your creative juices flowing. And I also find that anytime I'm stuck in a rut, like we have a business problem that I don't know how to solve, Mm -hmm. or there's something in my life that I'm trying to figure out. If I go do something creative, often the solution comes to me out of nowhere. It's like when you're taking a shower and you have those shower thoughts that like solve all your life problems. To me, that's creative rest is when you are doing something completely unrelated, but it's just like making your brain start to fire on all cylinders and suddenly you can apply that to whatever the other problems in your life are. I completely agree. And one way that um, I find rest in this way that's a a little bit of a different um, strategy is um, listening to things that make me think creatively. So a lot of times I'll listen to podcasts that are just like interesting topics to me, something, you know, that's not like about how to do this better, just like, but something that is different, that's unique, that gets my brain thinking in a different flow. And I think something for me that like I really need is like to get my brain to work the way that I like want it to. A lot of times I feel like mentally stressed and creative um, thinking helps me like calm my brain. So I guess that can be considered like cognitive, but for me, it's like a creative thing. Like I need to like absorb creative information in my brain to like feel like I can like think through something sometimes Mm -hmm. maybe like listening to music is a good example of that totally yeah I think that that's a really good example and like a huge thing for so many people and Mm -hmm. one other thing I'm serious I'm taking up needle pointing this year I found a place in Fort Worth that you can go for like an hour to two hour class and for $35 the lady will like sit with you and teach you how to needle point so if you want to come with me let me know because I want to needle point a million Christmas ornaments stockings you can do so many things with needlepoint and i just like feel like it's like a cute Hello. wholesome like wifey type of hobby and I'm, just, I'm trying you. to get on the wifey package sooner <laughs> rather than later so i'm like maybe if i sit around and knit that'll make him want to marry me <laughs> that'll get you the, the ring yeah mm. okay so there you have it those are the what was it 12 types 10 types 10. of rest and those are really consider them like the tools in your toolbox like you now know that rest doesn't just mean falling asleep rest can be all of these different types of things and they can alleviate all these types of symptoms of fatigue you're feeling in your life So if you're wondering how to, now that you know all the types of rest, you're like, okay, Logan and Lane, like I know the types of rest, but like, how do I know what to use when, how do I know which type of fatigue or tired or stress I'm feeling in the moment? That is when you are going to whip out these journaling prompts that Lane is about to say to you. Yeah. So here are a couple of journal prompts that we would recommend um, leaning into. We'll put these in the show notes, but here they are for now. One, how frequently do I catch myself rushing and multitasking to meet my self-imposed expectations? (laughs) This one gets me. It's the self-imposed part yeah, for me. That is a very you You've thing. told me that before. You're yeah. like, Logan, you make these fake rules for yourself for no reason and I don't know why you do that. It's true. You've gotten better, I think. I've been thinking mm-hmm. about it. That's good. And you've been reflecting. You notice patterns in me that I don't notice in myself and then you give me solutions. Aww. We talk about this all the time where I just like, I'm like, oh, there's a problem. <laughs> and you like go and fix the problem. And I feel like we'll you so. have little tidbits and you're like, Logan, I noticed you do this. And I'm like, you're right. It's not annoying that I do that? No, I love it. Okay, good. I'm so glad. No, I love it because I'm not doing therapy right now. So I feel like your therapy can sometimes like rub off on me. Wow. That's really a beautiful compliment. Thank you. I mean, thank you for (laughs) um, letting me move off of the money you're spending on therapy. You're very welcome. All right. So the second one is what's one small expectation that I can let go of today? Last one, how might letting go of this small expectation serve me? What's one expectation you can let go of today, Lane? Having to do anything after this podcast besides sleep. That's beautiful. <laughs> and care it's, for my nephew. Yes, I do need to care for um, care for Evan. But I think that really the rest that I need right now is physical rest. I need to I go believe sleep. it. Momming is no joke. Yeah, my three month old is really keeping me um, up around the clock right now. So we're working on it. Maybe he needs some physical rest too. <laughs> yeah. What kind of rest does Evan need? Um, playful. I think. Yeah, I think that that's where he's at right now. Yeah. Yeah. Playful rest is on Evan's schedule. Physical rest on Lane's schedule. What's on your schedule this weekend? Uh, on my schedule is what's the one where I want to be around people? 
psychosocial. That one. Because okay. Andrew's been gone for a week. So yeah. I've been by myself and I come to the office a lot. So I actually feel like I've been pretty busy, but I just need to like chat someone's ear off. So hence, I feel like why we've been so talky on this podcast today. And I'm about to go do a lot more annoying of him <laughs> once he gets back from the airport. I got lots to talk about. Okay, gals, we did it. That is it for today's episode. I hope you learned something. And I hope that this is a tool that you will use in the future to give yourself a little bit of grace. I feel like we push ourselves so hard Mm -hmm. every day. If you're listening to this podcast, we know you're an overachiever like us. So we want to encourage you not only to meet your goals, but to not kill yourself while doing so. So we hope these types of rest will help you give yourself what you need in the moment, meet yourself where you're at, and ultimately lead you to accomplishing your goals with a more refreshed attitude. And with that, we'll close it out. Have a great day and we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Monday through Sunday. If you're building a career, a business, or any relationships, we know your time is valuable. So thank you for spending it with us. With that in mind, we'd be so grateful if you can spare two minutes to rate and review this podcast. Your reviews help spread the message to more people that work doesn't have to suck. By the way, if you're looking for your community, join us on Instagram and TikTok at Monday through Sunday pod. We're all about connecting our like-minded listeners together. Let us know if there's anything you want us to talk about by sending us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. And we'll talk to you on the next episode.